Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, I'm going to be kicking off the John Wick series of movie reviews with none other than the original film, which I really like this steelbook. Um, I do have the regular Blu-ray edition of John Wick, but um, I saw this at Walmart uh, one night, and it had uh, they also had John Wick 2 on sale, and it was like 15 bucks. And I was like, you know what? I don't mind picking the that one up. So uh, the other one that I have is in storage. But, um, I, I mean, I got this one out in Colorado, so, you know, just to have it. But, yeah, I really like this steelbook. I think that's pretty cool. And then Part 2 has a nice one as well. So I'm hoping in a few months when Chapter 3 comes out that, Best Buy will continue. I'm sure they will. And we can get a really nice steel book for John Wick 3. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, uh, you know, start these uh, recordings yesterday, but I was still feeling under the weather. Um, it took a lot to get through that Owen Hart video, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, today I'm feeling pretty much 100% better, and I figured why not start doing the John Wick series of reviews now for you guys. Well, now that I'm, you know, uh, not sick anymore, I'm not fighting a cold, and, uh, you know, I can sit here and, and actually power through a video without, you know, passing out or anything. So, yeah. So, John Wick, um, at this point in May 2019, I'm pretty sure that, again, most people know about the John Wick series, the John Wick saga. Uh, they probably have seen all the movies to this point. And, uh, you know, these films have obviously struck a chord with people and are very popular, which I'm very happy for. Um, you know, John Wick, all three, are, you know, genuinely excellent movies, in my opinion. You know, they are nice tributes to old school action films and they bring something fresh and something new and something fun to movies which you know I think is missing in quite a lot of uh, films that come out now is there's nothing you don't have to be original but something different and something fresh is what I like and that's why I really enjoy the John Wick saga because these movies are, they were definitely, when this came out back in 2014, um, it was definitely a breath of fresh air. You know, and I do remember when this movie came out. I didn't see it in theaters. Um, the only one that I've seen in theaters is Chapter 3. But when the movie came out on, uh, on Blu-ray and everything, I checked it out and downloaded it and really enjoyed it. And, of course, picked up the, uh, the Blu-ray of the movie then I, I just watched it last night again and it still it still holds up you know for a movie that's five years old um which is hard to believe it's been five years since the first one came out let alone two sequels um you know it it's it's one that i like to go back to and, and watch and enjoy and it's just a very it's a it's a great movie i have no problem saying that it, it's a great film it's well made it's fun um, you know, yeah, there's a little bit of CG in the movie. Yeah, there's some shaky cam, but it doesn't bother me to the point where I hold it against the movie. You know, I, some of the CG, I get why they did it that way for safety and stuff like that. And, you know, some of the shaky cam, I guess it just happened to be that way. But the majority of these movies, all three are very well shot well-made movies, you know, and, you know, the people that worked on these films, you know, uh, Chad Stileski, everyone else obviously knew what they were doing and did their homework, and it shows in these movies, you know, but let's talk about, of course, the, the original film, the one that started it all. When John Wick came out, um, to be honest, I really did not have an interest in seeing it. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. Um, uh, I had kind of heard about the movie 
and I saw, I think, maybe some TV spots. I don't think I saw any trailers to it. And I'm like, okay, it looks all right. You know, it looks like just another action film that would come and go and, and probably not do anything and not make any noise and people would forget about it. But I'm glad that I was wrong because when the movie did come out, it blew up big and, you know, my friends on here enjoyed it. And, you know, I was like, okay, let me, um, let me give this a look. And I waited a little bit, of course, but, um, you know, when the movie eventually came out on home video, I gave it a look and I was very impressed with it. And I got the fact that, okay, this movie deserves the hype. It deserves the attention. And I'm glad that it was successful, you know, and again, here we are five years after the first movie, which again, five years went by very quickly. Um, you know, again, it's really hard to believe that this movie is already five years old, but it still holds up. You know, again, I watched it last night and it's still as good as it was. Whew. Excuse me, if not better, you know. And I'm just, I'm just so glad that we have, with all the, with all the shit that comes out now with the endless fucking superhero movies, you know, all these pointless horror films that come out now, I'm glad that there's still movies out there like a John Wick that go against the grain, go for the old school approach and give us something that's not only extremely entertaining, but a very well-made movie. You know, that got the critical and the box office praise because it deserves it. But, you know, John Wick, those movies are not the norm. They're not the mainstream movies that come out. And that's the stuff that I enjoy. You know, not the Marvel films. Not all these shitty horror films that come out. Stuff like John Wick. You know, that's the stuff that I enjoy to go see. You know, whether it's in the theater or here, you know. So there you have it. But the story, like, I, I remember hearing about the story of the film, and I was just like, what, really? And, you know, that was my initial reaction, but after that I kind of thought, well, you know, to be perfectly honest, that's a throwback to these older films, because I, I thought maybe it was like a half parody first. You know, it was kind of tongue-in-cheek and... They were kind of poking fun at the older films. But then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, I get it. But, you know, John Wick is a former assassin that gets married, you know, loves his wife more than anything in the world, leaves the business for her, and she dies. She passes away. And, you know, her last gift to him is this puppy, is this little dog, you know, and John comes to love the dog and. Um, you know, one day he's out, he's getting gas after he bought the dog toys and food and everything. And some, you know, douchebag guy, some, you know, Russian, you know, mafia guy's son, you know, calls John Wick a bitch and tries to buy his car. And John Wick calls him a bitch right back. And then they, you know, attack him later that night, kill the dog and steal his car. <laughs> and then he sets out to get revenge. But the, you know, the, the one, like, I wouldn't say it's a twist, but the one difference, so to speak, is the fact that not only is John going to take out this guy that killed his dog and stole his car, but now he has to deal with the guy's dad who he used to work for when he was an assassin. Now he has to take him out too. And that's the one thing, or, you know, there's many things that I love about the John Wick uh, series of movies, but one of the things I really enjoy about all of them is the fact that there's consequences for everything that happens in these movies. In the first movie, this kid and his friends, you know, kill his dog and steal his car. So obviously John Wick is going to go fucking kill these guys and get revenge. But I like how, again, the guy's dad was someone that John used to work for, and now he knows 
that he is going to have to kill this guy as well. And I like how the guy is afraid. You know, the mob boss is afraid, which unfortunately that actor, Michael Nyquist, uh, passed away not too long ago. But um, I like how he's legitimately afraid of John Wick, and he knows that John Wick is going to, you know, rain down an epic shitstorm on anyone that's involved. And that's exactly what he does in the course of the movie. You know, but I like how there's this whole world, this secret society of assassins and, you know, all these criminals and everything. It was, it was, It's really cool. It, it reminded me of kind of like a James Bond film, you know, the older, the older James Bond films, you know, the Sean Connery ones, how, you know, like Spectre was the main group that was going to you know, try to kill James Bond, and in each movie they were kind of involved somehow in the, in, you know, in the older ones. They kind of got away from that with the later films, but I'm glad they did. <laughs> you know, some of them, they, they brought the idea back, but for the most part, they evolved. But, you know, and that's the thing, like, there's a lot of things in these movies that are nice throwbacks to you know, older action films, which we'll get more into with, you know, stuff that's particularly in John Wick 2 and 3, but, um, you know, there's a lot of really good stuff in all these movies. And again, like, you know, the story is so just simple, and that's what I like about it. You know, the sequels, they obviously build on it, which I'm glad they do. It wasn't just the same movie over and over again. You know, these are movies... I think generally get better with each film because they evolved with the story, but it's still that central idea that John Wick is not someone you want to fuck with. And that's what people learn in all three movies. If you, you know, if you push him to his limits, he's going to push you back and he's going to let you feel it. And I think, you know, I would love to see what the, the total body count is in all three of these movies, but I'm sure it's a lot. But John Wick don't fuck around, you know, and I think especially in this one, because he had, you know, the only things left from his life that were taken from him, you know, the dog that his wife gave him and his car. And those were both taken away from him. And the guy's got to do what the guy's got to do, you know. And again, he rains down this shitstorm on New York City. And I love how it takes place in New York City. That's another thing that I really like about these movies is, yeah, you know, they go in part two, he goes to Rome and then he goes to Morocco in three. But I like how it all comes back to New York. It all comes back to this central location. And I love how the movie have, the movies, excuse me, have a linear storyline. Oh, excuse me. You know, Part two takes place a few days after the first one. Then three picks up right, you know. They, they've been doing these right. They've really been making these movies right. And, you know, hopefully they continue. We maybe get two more movies. And I think five would be good, you know. After a while, it'll, just like any other franchise, it'll get stale. But, you know, they've, they've been very good. And the action scenes are top-notch, you know, from... I like how the movie, the, the first 20 minutes or so, I like how it just builds up. It just shows that, you know, John is dealing with the tremendous amount of grief of losing his wife. And, you know, like the, the bartender says in the movie, you know, I've never seen you like this. What do you mean vulnerable? Like, yeah, like, you know, John Wick, yeah, he's a badass. He's running around shooting and killing people, but he's a human. And he's angry and he's pissed off and he's had to deal with this tragedy of losing his wife. And now they comp people complicate matters by killing his dog and stealing his car and just making shit a million times worse. He was already pissed off. Now he's even more pissed off. You know, it's just it's it's a simplistic story. And I think that's why it works so well. I think we can all relate to losing someone that we care about and then just everything else complicates matters and just makes us more angry and more pissed off. 
but I like how it sets up that he gets the dog, he's happy, they take it, they kill the dog, and then there's that, you know, kind of introduction to who this guy really is, you know, the Baba Yaga, the boogeyman, you know, he's not the boogeyman, he's the guy you said to kill, the fucking boogeyman, you know, it's like, all right, you know, and again, that's what, you know, I know people mock older action films and stuff, but that was a big deal, a big trope of those older movies was the legitimacy of these badass characters. You know, like John Matrix, you know, John Matrix was, uh, you know, special ops leader and did all these missions and everything. And, you know, now he's got to save his daughter. He has to go up against an army to save his daughter. You know, same with Rambo. You know, Rambo was a Green Beret, you know, Vietnam. And now he's put in this situation where these guys fucked with them and they pushed them over the edge. And now he's defending himself. You know, that's the thing. You know, movies now don't have that kind of motif or trope to where they build up these characters. Like, a, you know, John Wick obviously has them, but. You know, I miss those older action films where the the main character was like this legend, you know, this legendary figure. Like Demolition Man, you know, John Spartan was the Demolition Man. He, you know, he kick ass, he blew shit up, and he took names. And that's why he was called Demolition Man. You know, you don't have, like, you don't have that with these movies now, with these wannabe action films now, except, you know, movies like, like this and Taken and those kind of films. But, you know, times change, unfortunately, in some ways. But, you know, the first action scene where the guys try to come kill him at his house, he's just wiping them out. And it's a good blend. It's not all, you know, not every action scene is the same in these movies. You know, there's a good blend of shoot em up and fighting. And, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff. And it's, it's a good mix. You know, and another thing that I really like about these movies is the humor. It's kind of that subtle humor, like when the cop knocks on his door, you know. Hey, John. Hey, Jimmy. You working again? You know, clean it up a little bit. Oh, okay. He looks in. I'll leave you alone. I laugh at that stuff. When, when I saw the third one, a lot of those little moments like that, I laughed at. I was the only one. Maybe I'm just fucked up in the head or something. I don't know, but... The humor, I think, really works in these movies as well because it's that subtle, you know, little one-liner or something that makes you laugh. Well, at least me. You know, but the movie is just chock full of great action. You know, the bathhouse scene when he's in the church, the finale and the rain and everything. Like, it all really works. All the action, the, the shootouts and the fights and everything just really work in these movies. And... It's just top notch from from beginning to end. You know, Chad Stileski was a stuntman. You know, he worked with Keanu Reeves on The Matrix. He was uh, Brandon Lee when after Brandon Lee had passed away. He was the double for Brandon Lee when they reshot portions of The Crow. So the guy's been around a long time and he knows what he's doing. And you know, they really take their time with these movies, particularly the action sequences. They're top notch. And you could see everything. There's no, you know, like I said, there is shaky cam in these movies, but it's, n number one, it's not that bad to where you can't focus on what's going on. And number two, it's not during like an action scene or something. All the action scenes are filmed steady. You can see everything. You can see what he's doing and when he's killing people and everything. And, you know, it's so enjoyable. It's like, oh, wow. This is how they used to make these movies. And again, they've made three John Wick films so far. The fourth one's, you know, going to come out, I guess, not next year, but the following year or the year. I'm not sure. But they're, they're popular. They've made money. They've been successful. So why can't every movie be like a John Wick? Not, you know, maybe not an action film, but why can't every movie follow that? you know, mold of what they did to be successful. Why is it so hard for every movie to do that? I don't understand. I really don't. Like, it's not that hard to figure out. 
but that's Hollywood for you. But yeah, you know, John Wick is just a very enjoyable, it's a modern classic. I will say that it's, it's definitely one of the, the best action movies outside of the kind of the golden years from the eighties to the early two thousands, you know, before they died out, you know, one of the more, you know, I, I would put this movie up there with dread, um, the raid, the Punisher with, uh, Thomas Jane, I think is one of the, the best ones out there from again, the, after the, the, the golden years of action films, you know, again, the 80s and the 90s and, the, you know, the early 2000s when they were still making them, you know, I definitely put the John, all three, I put the, the whole John Wick saga up there among the best because they are, because, you know, these movies are genuine action films. They are great tributes to the older films, but they're fresh. There's good things in there. I like the cast. I mean, Keanu Reeves was perfect for John Wick. Uh, I liked Willem Dafoe in the film. I liked uh, Michael, or uh, yeah, Michael Nyquist is the bad guy. Unfortunately, he's gone. Ian McShane, I like. You know, you get to see David Patrick Kelly has a cameo as the cleaner. You know, there's a lot. You know, John Leguizamo has a small role. Even the villain, you know, the other villains, the, the kid that played the son, you know, I thought the cast was good. Everyone fit their role. Kevin Nash has a cameo, which is cool. Daniel Bernhardt from the Bloodsport sequels is one of the villains. You know, there's some really good people in these movies, and it, it's nice, you know, especially with the sequels as well. It's nice to see people, these people in these roles again. You know, I just, you know, these movies are, 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 are perfect. You know, they're great movies in my opinion, and I really enjoy them. And I, you know, again, I watched one and two last night to prepare for these reviews, and I really enjoy them. You know, I really like watching these movies and I will continue to do so for years to come. I will continue to enjoy the John Wick films. They're, they're modern classics in my opinion, but that's about it for John Wick Uno or chapter Uno or whatever you want to call it, but a very solid movie, a modern classic in my opinion. And it's, I'm glad that they're still making these. And I really, really happy that they're still making these movies. So until the next time, as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Of course, next I will be reviewing a good sequel. Um, I like the first one more, but it's still a very good movie, John Wick Chapter 2. So until then, take care. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.